that says that I'm just a reporter. I, my skills are reporting. Um, and uh, all good reporters should start out from basically what you do is you ask people who know about things what is going on. That is my general method. Um, in the previous life, Linda was somebody I would come to to ask uh, exactly that. Um, but I think then the job of the reporter is to just relentlessly ask that question what is going on? What is the story? And sometimes it's not obvious what the story is. Let me give you an example. I didn't want to be the economic editor of the news. I was offered the job and I was really, really, uh, I was already a reporter on the program and I had spent a long time getting away from doing business reporting because I thought it was quite boring. Uh, not enough stories were going on. So I, I mean, on, on the eve of the Northern Rock thing, I was covering a murder in, uh, in Liverpool, which I love doing stories like that. Um, and because um, it's got, it's not just about murder, it's about policing, it's about consent, it's about delinquency, it's about the working class and what's happened to it. But I made them write People, Planet and Profit into my job title in 2007 when I got the job. Because I just really did the April, like April 2008, because I, I want to, to do the whole thing. And then about May 2008, a, 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 an analyst called Bruce Packard, who worked for an obscure uh, anal analysis agency, put a target price on Bradford and Bingham of zero on the shares of a, of, a, of, a, of a major company. He said, look, the target price is zero. And I got him on. And, and, and I realized that something was happening because he was quite bemused to be on Newsnight because nobody else had called him. Mm -hmm. People had laughed at him. In the course of putting Bruce on two or three times to discuss why this might be a, a possible story, I was calling, I remember to right now, sitting in my garden, writing a blog, talking to my editor in the early summer, and I'm saying, look, somebody just called me from, a, from a, a, a bigger consultancy and said, one of the banks is going to go bust. And we don't know which one it is, it's July. We don't know which one it is, but, and, and the conversation was, we'll be lucky if it's only one. And we just, I kind of had a whimsical discussion with my bosses. How do we do that? How would we do that as a story? I blogged about it in the end. It was a, it was a, a reportable, single source, reliable person saying, look, there are discussions about, because we've already had Bear Stearns. Bear Stearns looked like a bit of an accident because of slightly crazy people running the company. Um, that's probably the best description <laughs> if given. Um, but um, given that, you know, how long do you have to stay in a card game without a Blackberry on? when your bank is going bust, to, you know, to, to, to be thinking of the slightly heterodox. ones. Um, but what I think about, what, I, what the inadequacy, I would focus on the inadequacies of what we've done. The inadequacy is I couldn't see a journalistic way, or even in hindsight, I cannot see a journalistic way. If I would got from that blog, from those conversations, to an advance, uh, journalistic scoop, which would have said before the day Lehman started to slide on them, which is the Wednesday before the, the, the Monday, how would we have got it on? We think the BBC, Lehman Brothers, is about to go bust. And I don't know if anybody in the audience has any answers, any of the forensic journalists, people who really study this. I, I can only think of hacking their emails <laughs> and their phone accounts, or employing private detectives to follow <laughs> and listen to who was the key person? The, the FD. Because the FD was giving briefings that turned out not to be right. And um, what can you do? I mean, what would you have done? I don't know. But this, this is this, my frustrations about this story are that process. Almost every media outlet has managed to get um, very talented and, you know, and the right people for the right jobs in the process of addressing the crisis. And so one little study, an MA thesis, would all the media studies would be to look at the different things that all the economic editors are actually doing. The economic editors in Britain alone, I think, are a fantastic cater and cohort of individual and interesting journalists. You can compare and contrast. So we've got the people. I think generally, it, you, you, you report to your audience. All editors are very concerned about, about addressing the audience in the right language. Where it came up for us, uh, and again, this was on, this was three, on the day the TARP failed, so about, about the end of the second week after leaving, the TARP fails in Congress, disaster. Um, I was already talking to bond analysts, and generally the bond guys were coming out of the woodwork and wanted to talk. And people who had um, 
been uh, in the markets in Japan who bought the general thesis, the Steve Keen thesis, that if this goes, we're going to have a decade of stagnation, with, with, uh, which only monetary stimulus can even save us from. And then they said, have you heard of quantitative easing? And really, I mean, I'd kind of heard of it, but I didn't understand it. And I went to the program and I said, look, the people I'm talking to are saying, even at this point, we're going to have to talk, start talking about printing money, quantitative easing. And I, honestly, I mean, I think this is no. There was, a, there was an argument that inside Newsnight's editorial team was whether we could even use the word. And I actually almost didn't use the word, quantitative easing. And then when we had to, we kind of did a lot about it. We got one of our culture correspondents to go on the streets and ask people whether they heard of it. So we've done, we were aware of the terminology, but it's not that the terminology was, 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 uh, was just weird, it was the concept of a Western government printing money was just not in anybody's lexicon. 